It was September of 2013 when I came into my office and my assistant said to me, uh, the Commissioner of Corrections wants to see you. And I wasn't sure what that was about. You can understand that was not a greeting that I was used to. I'd never had the privilege to meet him. He'd never been on our campus. That commissioner was now retired Commissioner Jim Rubenstein. And I would at this moment like to ask him to stand so we might give a recognition to his attendance. Where are you there, Jim? You're supposed to be over here. Today. He was accompanied with a couple of others, and we were just recounting even prior to this service, the occasion of their coming was just at the time of a major dropping of rain. I mean, it was a deluge in our in Beckley. And so he and his companions, C.J. Ryder and Calvin uh, Sufton, joined, and they looked like wet puppies, I promise you. They were drenched. But within a moment's time, after those preliminary introductions, this question was raised by Commissioner Rubenstein to me. He said, Dr. Anderson, would you be willing to start a Bible college in the prison system of West Virginia? It wasn't on our radar screen as a college, but I can tell you it was a great and wonderful invitation. And that began a journey that, and his invitation was, he wanted to start immediately. I guess that shows you the passion that he had for that particular program. And I'm so thankful that you had that passion. But that particular occasion was such that as he introduced that to us, we started on about a year-long journey of preparations. And that preparation was certainly made possible through the uh, the companionship of C.J. Ryder. And I'd like to just uh, bring his attention to you at this moment. C.J., would you stand? It's a blessing to have him here. Uh, it's our privilege now at this time to welcome the attendance of our governor, the Honorable Jim Justice, is here. And I will say as he is preparing to come forward and share his remarks that he has rearranged his schedule to join with us today. And I'm so thankful for your willingness to do that, Governor. You're a dear personal friend and just a kind companion to things that matter like this. We've got the legislature in session now. And you know how crazy that could be. But uh, we're trying to get some things done and trying to continue to do good things within our state. We've got things rolling in the right direction, but there's still lots to do. You know, they just told me that I'm the first sitting governor ever to come to this facility. You know, that's amazing to me because all the great work that's being done here by lots and lots of people is just shown very brightly today. Just think about it. You know, Dan Anderson had just spoke. The leader of the band at Appalachian Bible Institute. Or Bible College. Now a lot of you may not know Dan nearly as well as I. But I can tell you that he's joined me in prayer over and over and over and over. At really, really tough moments. And I joined him in prayer when things were really, really difficult in his life. You know, it's incredible the power of the good Lord and the power of God. It's incredible. You know, it's just, uh, I can think of so many things, but let me just tell you this story, and I won't. I won't take much of your time, but my dad died in 1993. He was my best man in my wedding and absolutely my best buddy. Now, in 1970 or 71, let's say 1970, I was 19 years old, 18 maybe, 18 years old, and the Ohio River Barge Company, you know the, the barges, the tugboats you see that push the barges up and down the river. They dedicated a boat in my dad's honor called the James C. Justice. And it pushed barges up and down the rivers and all the way to New Orleans and everywhere all the time. I had to give the dedication prayer to the boat in New Orleans when they launched the boat. And my mom broke a bottle of champagne on the boat and off the boat went. I'm the oldest sibling, and so I, I'm the one to give the dedication prayer, and there was 
twice as many people as there are here today, and I was scared to death. Well, some way I got through it. I saw the boat one other time in my life. One other time. Now, that's 1970. My dad died in 1993. And when he died, our businesses were upside down as they could be, and I was scared to death and knew nothing whatsoever about the coal business and knew I didn't know what to do. You know, long and short of it is, I tried real hard for about nine months. And then a call came that if I could get to Wheelie, well, I'd never been to Wheelie in my life. If I could get to Wheelie today, we could get a coal order. Well, I called, I didn't have an airplane or anything like that. I called down to Charleston and rented a plane and came and picked me up and off to Wheelie we went and got off a of snowstorm you've ever seen in your life. I had a little sport coat on like this. I didn't have a top coat. And I mean, it was so blue and cold, it was unbelievable. We landed on that runway and one lane of it swept. I got out on the tarmac and the wind just would cut you in two. And I thought, what am I going to do? I'm going to Wheeling Pittsburgh Steel. And I don't know a thing about what I'm going to do. But I know our company is right on the edge. This could very well be it right here. Well, I got in a cab. Down the hill I went like this. I had no idea where I was. I'd never been there before. Down the hill we went like this stop sign and turn. And the river was there. It never stands boat right beside me. You see, God moves in our lives every single day. The great work that Appalachian Bible is doing, the great work that all these incredible graduates are doing, the impact that they're having on all the other inmates here, the culture of their communities, their families, how proud, how proud they can be of you. It is unbelievable what has happened right here in our midst. So it honors me beyond belief to be here. I know I'm disrupting your ceremony, but I am honored in every way to be here. You should be really proud. That's all there is to it. And I mean it when I tell you I love you. And I mean it when I tell you that I'm proud of you. Now go on your ways as you go. Deliver the message that is in you today. Make goodness happen. You can do it. You've already done it. You know what you've done? Not only all of those up here, not only to our great secretary, our great administrator, you know, Jeff Sandy that's over here, not only to your governor, made us all, families and all, really proud. I can never thank the great work that's done here at Mount Hall. I can never thank, you know, all the great stuff that Dan Anderson and Navy, you know, Appalachian Bible does. I can never thank how dedicated all of your corrections people are here and how much goodness that we want. Now, we make mistakes, don't we? Everybody screws up. God knows if you had the number of mistakes that I've made, I am really good at what I do because I've screwed up about everything coming or going. It's a fact. We make mistakes. The one thing I will never not do is not tell you anything but the truth. I am very proud. God bless you in every way, shape, form, or fashion. Now, before they get going, I'm going to run and shake everybody's hand, and then I'm going to go back to really sometimes I've called it in the past and got in trouble by calling it just in the past, called it crazy land, you know, but sometimes it is crazy, and maybe because I make it crazy, but it is crazy land at times. But we're going to keep working. You know, the good Lord put Dad's boat there. The good Lord put you here today. The good Lord is in control. It is unbeatable the control in our lives. So God bless you. Thank you for having me.